All right. Oh, this might be the last time we see that country ham. We are not in the forest at all. I think that's the entrance to the park. Oh, oh the radio. Like the, the radio can't work. It's not fair. It looked like the entrance to uh, Harry's place. Well, maybe. No, it's gonna work because it was never George. It was his like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh oh, God. It's like the police group force. of group of kids, you know. His army of teens who came out. Here you go, sir. His Baker Street Irregulars. <laughs> oh, there was a huge glowing circle, but fuck that. Look at all these cars I bought through the game. I'm just going to get into each of them. Maybe we're showing off the music in them, or... I just realize he's starving. But he's not. It's pretty full up. He just changed his mind. <laughs> it's as if he's of two minds. Oh! Oh, I guess he realized maybe he was missing a car. It's like, I gotta go to Lysander's. Buy another car. Need a new muffler. Go find it out in the junk pile. And then I'll tell you a story about a sergeant named Buttfuck. <laughs> uh, Harry's car. car. Alright. Sure, why not? So, if the, uh, the outline is correct, it's not the limo. I think the limo would be kind of fun to win. Oh, it's, an oh, old... it's a little roadster. Yeah. But Harry can't get his wheelchair in that. 20 Vizagon? What? You just wanted to buy them all. Okay, fine. Um, well, I think it was, like, Harry's car 40 years ago or some shit, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Alright, shit. Look at how happy everybody is. So... Not beating the shit out of each other every time it rains. Whoop. It's all good. I guess now we're gonna go find these uh, these orange uh, <laughs> uh, carrots and take care of them. Yeah, maybe. Is he gonna finally give Greg Koch back? Oh, maybe. If he's, he's like, gonna just go ahead. If he's gonna complete every quest, then he has to he has to actually give the, the guitar to keep. And he's gonna be like, just for the love of God, please let me rearrange some things. Hey, bro. <laughs> Spend away, FBI. Oh, there's another map? Oh, all right, yeah, we got another spiritual. Hey, man, that map you just bought, it's the map to get to the Greenvale Central Let Central me change the lighting. It's uh, down no. the Emerald River, owned by a company named Darius Incorporated. It's there to supply extra power through hydroelectricity. Oh, we're going to go, like, hunt cool, ghosts huh? in a hydroelectric dam? Yeah. But it hasn't been used since a certain... Oh, okay, now let me change the lights yeah. there. I'm the leprechaun. I'm the, <laughs> the, name of the customer is back is still shopping. The only daughter of the rich Bartons who live down by the he's, lake. He's, Zach is totally just playing morning, along with him. The man yeah. of the house, Alex, was awoken by the screams of his wife. When she calmed down, she told his, him that Laura his was His way gone. of speaking really saps a lot of the, the scariness out of the story. Wife yeah. And started looking for the girl. There were a lot of possibilities at this point as to what happened. Well, but heading yeah. out to the garden, he came across something chilling. A patch His of ice. His beloved dog, soaking wet, with one of her shoes in he his shot mouth. the dog. She drowned. Ah, well, Alex headed for the bathroom what? now. It was really cold out, and he had to pee. straight to the boathouse myself. Was he confused? Maybe just shaking? Not stirred. He washed his face, his hands, and then he called the police. So he was worried about something else. Oh yeah, FBI, you're well, hot. The police searched the lake for like definitely days, hotter than when he had the brown they didn't hair. Didn't find Laura. The search was called off, but some people still wish he had the catsuit outfit. Was a simple drowning. Thirty-one days after she vanished, Laura showed up in a most unexpected Jersey. place. There was a massive power outage after a night of rain. I kind of wish that that climax had played out with her in the catsuit. Oh man, it yeah. makes me shudder to even think about it. 
When a worker from the electricity well, I can see where company that would, uh, opened up the water with, uh, turbine, shirt front. there she was, inside, mutilated. Having fallen into the lake, the turbine must have sucked her up. The blood vessels in her eyes had burst, and her nails were ripped off. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, that's whatever, Keith, but like, turbine, let me tell you about uh, what happened to the girl I left, okay? <laughs> I mean, if she's and chopped up by a turbine, I'm not sure her nails would be pulled off. I think her fingers might be cut off. That's what um, the father was she might be about. smashed. I, maybe the suction. The I don't know. That she took her own life. Lost Why did we spell rumors the British way? I'm like, what? She chose to Keith, give up living. Is Keith very posh? But in doing so, she he's so posh, his accent kind of went round the other way and became surfer. <laughs> you better be careful, Mr. FBI. That shopper in the background is not... Herself. She's a little indecisive. <laughs> so I guess this psychic spot only opened up after the, the climactic scene, maybe? I, I guess. I imagine he would have done it before, otherwise. Give him Grekoch, for God's sake. Or, no, we probably want to keep Grekoch to take care of the crawlers or whatever down in the psychic place. Yeah. Give him a golf club. Golf club's a crappy weapon. They break. Break quickly. Yeah, I remember seeing that once before. And it was like, oh my god, things break? Like, that's worthless. I don't like that in games. Alright, Geekmeister, you mad bastard. What are we doing now? We are eating pickles. No, we are using the radio, of course. Alright, we're gonna go somewhere, and it's gonna be amazing. It's a really long load screen just to get out of the damn. Uh, convenience store or whatever. It does seem that way, yes. They're all desolate now because George is gone. Oh, you know, you had the hot dogs. I actually uh, got a cookie. <laughs> One of those oh, okay, nice good. plush cookies, but I forgot to bring it over here while we record, and so now I'm trapped. So, oh well. Oh good, we're going to replay this. So I thought if we if we got a little replay section here, we can maybe take some time and reflect on the game as a whole. So, you know, now that we've uh, now that we've gotten to this point, what do you think? Does it hold up? I mean, how do you feel about uh, the reveals and the culmination of it? I think I think they're really fucking goofy. <laughs> um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, the the game suddenly turns anime, um, I mean, which is okay, but way out of style. I mean, the the giant rolling toad that uh, Kaysen turns into, uh, the the uh, machine gun is loud. Hey, I can turn it down. Um, we have ways of you know, uh, accomplishing, I guess. I know. Uh, I mean, the, the, the sheriff's uh, uh, evil, villainous monologuing, um, none of that quite fits in. Um, although, as a whole, it is a game with things that don't fit. So, maybe there's some, some sense to it. I, yeah, it feels as if, I don't know, I guess it feels as if, like, the, the, the game had one enemy for, what, 20 hours and then uh, suddenly had like you know it, it felt like all the boss battles were at the end you know right right um, a few mini bosses along the way would have made it feel more sensitive right right yeah because it's like the change in game style starting with you as Emily fighting Thomas felt like a breath of fresh air, but then it just, I mean, that was it from, you know, it was just that over and over again from then on out, like, just crazy shit that you, I mean, I guess you've had to do quick time events before, but. Right. Um, yeah, it just. If, if we had, if we'd spent more time with a raincoat killer up to then, um, mm. and we, more actual combat and less quick time running yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it. I don't know, maybe some more uh, set pieces would have helped or something like that, but it just, it feels very unbalanced. I, <laughs> I'll never get tired of him blowing himself up. Um, I have to say, like, I've, I've been thinking about it, and I honestly really liked 
the Zack reveal, like, I felt like, um, it was an answer that at least almost made sense and wasn't the obvious, which is that we're Zack, you know? Right, although I thought the, the, the fourth wall breaking, uh, we're Zack, uh, theory was also interesting. Same, same here, I, uh, I enjoyed it, but I thought it was clever that they found something that wasn't that, but still, as I say, almost worked. I, I, I've been thinking about it, and I'm like, does it actually work, though? Because if... Because there are one, or, one of two ways to interpret it. Either A, he was York up until the climax, and then remembering Zack allowed Zack to come out. Mm -hmm. Or he was Zack all along... Uh, but he, uh, but he, you know, I mean, he looked like this all along, but he, uh, he had uh, York, uh, the, the York personality on the outside. Um, but having, go ahead. <laughs> having, uh, in this end part, uh, these optional bits where Zack, uh, can play in the, the, the hell world. Um, or however you want to call it, um, is interesting because it takes away one possible interpretation. That is that it was all in York's imagination while he was sort of backseat to Zack for all this time during the whole uh, investigation. Yeah. But apparently Zack shares the delusion if it's a delusion. Right. Um, also... <laughs> Also, this seems to kind of... It's like, hey, maybe, hey, Harry, maybe you shouldn't take off your mask yet, because I just went down to the wherever we are and uh, fought a bunch of purple zombies that came out of the ground. So I guess it's not quite as pure as we thought it was. Um, uh, yes, good point. My, my big problem with the theory that... What was that? Grass cutter? A weed whacker. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, uh... He's like, man, if I can find it in my inventory, I'm so gonna use it. Uh, that's... No, here we go. Alright, yeah. I'm excited to see this. Um, oh, I guess maybe we're done. My problem with it is this, because I don't know if we'll get another chance to discuss this. Uh, I think we still have a, another spiritual map to go to, though, so maybe, uh, maybe I'll wait. But hell, it'll take us a while to get to wherever we're going. Um, my, my main problem is this. Emily asks about Zack, so I don't think so i whether he looked like this or not he must have been calling himself york and constantly talking to zach rather than it you know kind of being in his head right so right where he says uh, one thing don't ask me about zach that's personal right yeah. and it must not have said zach on his id badge because i mean he showed george and emily at least that and so you would think they would have been like, why would we ask you about your middle name or whatever, you know? Well, in the end game, they call him Zack, even though he doesn't have to explain that to him. So my guess is he has been Zack all along saying York when we hear Zack. Okay. So he was saying, you know, my name is Francis Zack Mor Morgan. Call me Zack um, and don't ask me about York. Um, at least that's one... One theory I've heard that so when it's kind of silly, but so when Emily was interested in Zach, she was really being interested in York. Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, but here he's whole... talking to York. Okay. So maybe. Yeah. So long. I need to get used to being on my own. That's. Really confusing. I'm not exactly sure. Like, it's like I felt like it was a really nice reveal, except for the fact that it doesn't quite make sense, you know? Right. And uh, having dead Emily being in love with the not quite real York is weird. It, it's because definitely weird, yeah. Depending on how you read it, she possibly had never met him. Right. Dumpster, please, once, once, just once. Sounded like there was some guy with asthma over there. Oh, this is... Right, we have to replay this as well. <coughs> Maybe he'll use the weed whacker. 
Looks like he cutter. looked like he was excited to do so. Here we go. Oh, Here we go. Would, yeah. Would he be? It's a good weapon. It doesn't hurt a lot, but it, it kind of um, like the chainsaw. It, it kind of locks them in when, once you actually get a su successful strike on them. All right. What are you doing? You already had the weed whacker. Oh, I see. It's using the box. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Notice in the upper left it says Zach now. Right. So. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. Yeah, um, and all of this leaving aside some of the 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 implications of, of things like Thomas's reveal and and Kason's very rapey MO and uh, uh, Sheriff George George's I don't know about George I mean in the greater world you you, you look at this and it, it it could be read as a justification for you know homicidal behavior because he's been because he had child abuse, um, which is a trope that is problematic. So, I mean, there's yeah, all that going I, I on don't, too. I don't think it did that. I think it just provided, you know, uh, like when they're I, I recently our episode 14 or 15 went live, and it's where they're looking at Anna's body, and Usha's like, whoever did this hates women, you know, and. and uh, so I think it just provides, like, yep, uh, George certainly hated women because of the way his mother treated him. But he also says, I'm very passionate, where women are concerned. Of course, you can hate and be passionate at the same time, obviously. Yeah. I mean, oh god, right in the balls, Zach. Jesus. I'm passionate about a weed whacker to the balls. <laughs> I have some ex-girlfriends who claim they're the same thing, so... Hate and passion? Well, they were always like, no, I'm just passionate. Ah, uh, that sounds healthy. <laughs> yeah, um, and there we are. Cleverly, cleverly hidden camera in that shot. Um, if, uh, if I were creating this, I would have been tempted to, to put your, or Zack in the mirror whenever York looked in the mirror. And it is, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad they didn't succumb to that temptation, but, I mean, I probably would have done it, and, and it would have made the, it would have lessened the reveal. I mean, so if you think about it, right, I guess, thinking about the people I've known with DID, um, when they're, when an altar is present, they're still aware of the... You know the owner of the body, if you will. Right. Um, but they do call themselves their own name, and think of themselves as their own name, and think of themselves as looking different often than what the body they're in looks. So Which sometimes gives rise to dysphoria. I was actually reading about that the other day. Sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, especially the gender is different. So uh, you know, um, I guess it kind of makes sense if. Literally, it's been this character with the white hair and the different colored eyes going around the whole time and, and showing people a, an ID that says Zack and saying, hey, I'm, I'm York, just call me York, and, you know, and maybe people are just like, well, it's odd, but, you know, we got two of the three names right. <laughs> I mean, right, right. And they seem more interested in his scar, really, than... Right. No one, no one really treated him as FBI, honestly. Not George, yeah, not enough. the regular citizens. Yeah. They probably should have. <laughs> Checked his credentials, more, especially when he started going a bit wacky. Yeah, yeah. So maybe... Maybe that's why Emily asked about Zack, because she's like... Maybe it was her way of saying, like, I want to get to know the real you or whatever. Could be, actually. Could be. But, that still makes it pretty weird that she went off and lived with York. <laughs> yes, yes it does. Uh, uh, if any of that's even remotely real. 
Sure. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, that that could be Zach's imagination. Although the boys seem to verify it, they're not very specific. Yeah. Definitely a lot more uh, questions left than answers. I, I I think I find it like a good 70% satisfying. There was an intended um, sequel um, that never came to pass. Um, and Swery did a game called Dead Demons... Uh, Dead no. 4D. Dead <laughs> Dreams Don't Die? Dead. I, think, I think it's Dark Dreams. Dark Dreams Don't Die, yeah. Um, which has some of the elements of, of this, and, and also promises sequel material. So maybe eventually some more answers are gonna are coming out. Uh, yeah. Swery likes the unanswered mystery, though. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I like, with everything in this game, uh, I think what somewhere around episode three, I just kind of gave in to the inevitability that it's it, there's no way it can make sense. Yeah, you know? it's just uh, fucking weird. Um, and I'm I'm mostly oh we're we gonna get red seeds. I thought we had already gotten that, but oh well, we've gotten so many damn cards at this point. Uh, so I you know I'm uh I'm okay with that. I. I wish that, that reveal had made a little bit more sense, but... I think it's one of those things where the more you explain it, the less sense it's going to make, no matter what. Sure. And so, I don't know. He could have actually explained it a little less, and it might even have been better. I don't know. Probably. Yeah. Kind of go the lynch route. Although, I don't know, I... The Lynch route, I, I feel very similar to Twin Peaks as I do about Lost in the sense of, like, there's a there's a guy who he at least ran a site, I don't know if it's still there anymore, and basically he was like, ask me any question about Lost, all the answers are there if you care to look, and so people will ask him questions, and, and like, his, his big uh, sort of comment about everything in general is... Most people get upset because they don't like the answer, not because right. the answer isn't there, you know? Because right. the answer on Lost, a lot of times, came down to, they are on a magic island, <laughs> you know? And it's like... Yeah, when the answer is it's just magic, that's never quite satisfying. Right, and it's like, a lot of people were very frustrated by that because for the first three years that was only kind of hinted at, never explicitly stated, and then they felt betrayed when uh, the show became explicitly sort of magic or whatever. The, the ambiguity was much more satisfying. Yeah, I, I disagree, but it's but I totally understand why people would be frustrated, because it certainly switched uh, genres. Well, I, I mean, I feel the way about some Stephen King. I think sometimes the best part of the story is when we're not quite sure what's going on. We don't know if it's supernatural or aliens or just one guy who's a big old jerk or or what. Right. I, I, I mean, a resolution of some sort is necessary, but I, I find I find a lot of pleasure in the ambiguity of it. That way I'm, I'm kind of in the inquiry with the protagonists. It's a mystery story until we until we know what's going on. Sure. And uh, Lynch will just never give you the answer, or if he does, it doesn't. It you sort of go, uh, what? I guess. Okay. <laughs> sure. See, I I don't know. I guess I disagree. I I feel like Lynch in general does a really good job giving us answers or at least clues. Okay. <laughs> 